friends, welcome back to the channel. I've got a lot of trash, a lot of wax to talk about, so let's go ahead and chat about it. I actually sat down before filming this and organized all of my trash. So we're gonna start with just like the general samples or foil packs that I've used. I have two of these Urban Decay um, lipsticks. This isn't even their new formula anymore, but I didn't like these shades. I put them on my lips both one time and was not a fan, so I didn't use these. Um, I use this Vita Bath Heavenly Coconut Cream Body Wash. I liked the body wash, wasn't a big fan of the scent. I have the Not Your Mother's Beach Babe Moisturizing Shampoo and Conditioner. This stuff was pretty nice and it had a decent scent. I use the Professional, it's just not my favorite primer ever, it's just a little thick. Um, I used this Tresemme Expert Step 1, Step 2. This is like the pre-wash conditioner and then the shampoo. I didn't like it. I didn't like the feel of my hair afterwards. It felt a little bit straw-like. I don't think um, my hair type is great for the reverse shampoo system that has kind of been a rage lately. I have the Balm d'Amour Loving Care Body Balm. This was fine. I use the Kate Somerville Goat Milk Moisturizing Cream. I've heard a lot about this, but I really didn't like it. It was a little too like thin and a bit sticky, which I don't like sticky moisturizers. Um, I use one of the Ulta Beauty Fig and Honey Moisturizer Body Lotions. I wasn't the biggest fan of this scent, but I like this formula. If you're somebody who wishes that the um, Bath and Body Works body lotion was a bit thicker, but not as thick as their like triple moisture body creams. This is like a good in between for that. So I do like that, but I just wasn't a big fan of the scent and I have too many lotions, so I can't go out and buy it. I used the um, Too Faced Fair Born This Way concealer sample. It wasn't enough to be able to test if I would like it. I think I would need to get like a deluxe size sample. I'm kind of hoping in a Sephora play box they include a sample of this so I can get a better feel for it. I use the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream. This stuff is nice. I use one of the Ulta Regular Nail Polish Remover Pads. These are okay, depending on what brand of nail polish, because I've used um, some other ones of these, depending on what brand of nail polish it is, it can take off all 10 nails. If it's um, like Julep, for example, Julep it has a harder time with, but like thinner drugstore ones, like Maybelline ones, it can take it off really easily. I'm not gonna return these, but I won't buy these again. I just don't think that they are an end-all be-all alternative to using just regular nail polish remover with like a cotton pad. Uh, I use another one of the Smashbox Photo Finish Foundation Primers. I've used tons of these and I'm just not the biggest fan of a silicone based primer. And then lastly, I have the Juice Beauty Oil-Free Moisturizer. I have no thoughts. Moving on to makeup. I finally used up the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I feel like I took the stopper out of this close to four, maybe four or five months ago. I did not realize how much more concealer I would still have in here, but even though you can't see through it, I can't, I've been scraping the sides and stuff and there's nothing else that I can get out of here, so I'm calling it quits. I am indifferent on this. I don't know if I would buy it again. I think I wanna try the Maybelline Age Rewind Concealer and kind of figure out if I like that better than this. It was so long ago that I had that that I'm not sure, but this wasn't like, the greatest thing ever. Then I'm throwing away this Pacifica Alight Multi Mineral BB Cream All in One. This doesn't really have a lot of coverage and I just don't really like it, so I'm not gonna bother to use it because it's just a little sample size. I'm also throwing away the Wet n Wild Coverall Correcting Palette. This I've had for like maybe three years. It came in like a Wet n Wild like little kit and these just aren't great formulas, it kind of goes on really thick and noticeable. It doesn't blend very well into your skin, unlike the Physicians Formula um, Concealer Twins that I have. So I thought I was going to try to fuss with this, but I'm just not going to. It's not worth it because uh, it's such a low value product and it's not that great. Um, I'm also getting rid of the Physicians Formula Argan Wear BB Concealer. I love the BB cream that they sell this in. It's the exact same packaging. It reminds me of Aladdin because of the little golden tops. And I thought this was going to be really, really cool because I was like, oh, it's got the sponge. It squeezes out. Like, you can blend it. But the sponge is not 
that's not squishy. Like they're the the actual packaging is right underneath there so there really is no cushioning between the plastic like lip and then the actual sponge um and the concealer provides no coverage like it looks like i've done nothing it takes away from the foundation that's underneath there already so this was bad i coupon this so it was like next to nothing that's why i don't feel bad throwing it away if it was maybe not a good applicator but the product was good i would just take the applicator off but nothing about it is good or works for me all right then we have a highlighter i have this big <sighs> I have this Becca Shimmering Skin um, Perfector Spotlight in Opal. This is the second one I have been able to use up completely. I think it was going on three years ago. They had three of their um, shimmering perfectors. It was like had Opal, a gold one, which I still have, and then they had Pearl. Love the pearl one, use that one first. This is my second favorite. Um, I just love everything about these. I was really hoping that they were gonna bring this back. Like I keep waiting to see this back again, but it hasn't come back since. But I just find the doe foot applicator is so easy to place the product on. Let's see if it'll focus. To place the product on. I, I like, I love, I much prefer liquid highlighters over powder. To me, they're just a lot easier to apply and to work with and to blend. So I am happy about this, but also bummed because now I'm down to just the one gold one and I haven't seen it come back since. So I'm really, really hoping, fingers crossed, that in the future they bring that back again because I definitely will buy it and maybe buy multiples of it because. I could easily just use those three highlighters and nothing else. Like those could be my ride or dies. They are just spending some of the best formulation and in the best vehicle for, for highlight for me. All right. Last thing I have um, for like priming is Becca. I've got the backlight priming filter. I use this whole thing out. This stuff is magical. This stuff's also expensive. It's $38 for a full size, but I have never had a primer provide that sort of like natural glow from within the way this does. Like it, it's so effortless, this product. I'm sure they put a lot of time into it, but it just comes across as an effortless, easy, I just woke up like this kind of primer. So I really do want to purchase this and it's motivating me to use through my other ones because that's like clearly the superior front runner for me right now. All right, then I have some mascaras. I have the Voluminous Butterfly Sculpt Waterproof. I, as I normally have to do for the um, Voluminous Butterfly ones, I took out the wand and used this one. Liked it a lot better, but I'm not gonna buy these again because I don't like the wands. I don't wanna have to keep supplying my own wand. It's not super hygienic. It's not very um, practical. I can't travel with this, so I'm glad it's gone. I also used up my Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. I have another one of these. This I really like. I really do enjoy this wand. It really makes my lashes look nice and full and long. It's just an all around awesome mascara. And then the last one that I have is the NYX Voluptuous. Um, it's supposed to be for volume and definition. I did not use this up completely. I pulled this out to use it and it did absolutely nothing for my lashes. And I just decided for myself, I was like, I didn't pay for this. Any NYX product you guys see in my collection, I won in like the world's most generous giveaway. I won like on Facebook their entire spring collection. I think it was in like 2012 now, super long time ago, and I still have tons of products. I think I won like over 200 items, which is insane. So I just thought to myself, I didn't pay for this. I don't like it. I'm not gonna just waste my time using something I don't like, having to use two mascaras in the morning. It's just, it's cumbersome. So I'm pitching it, and any other NYX mascaras that I come across that I don't like, I'm just gonna pitch them because it's not worth my time. That did nothing for my lashes. I also have a perfume. This is the Sweet Pink perfume. I got this at Christmas Tree Shop uh, a few years ago. It's supposed to be uh, basically a dupe for the Prada candy, I believe. I hadn't used this in a while. When I first got it, it smelled exactly like it. I loved it, and then it just sat there decaying with my other perfumes. And I pulled this out to use it, and it doesn't smell good anymore. It smells like it has gone bad, and it just doesn't smell great. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw it away. I think I paid no more than like three bucks for it, so I'm okay with that. But um, also kind of a bummer, because I did like the scent when I first got it. Another perfume that I have is the Clean Blossom. This I got in some kind of like sample bag. I think it came from Ulta. Enjoyed this. One of the first clean scents that I actually like. It doesn't smell like laundry detergent, which I think for me, a lot of the clean fragrances give that vibe where they give the vibe of like 
soap Febreze-esque, but I did like this one. Will I buy it? Mm, props not. Then some sort of like random things that I have. I have the Impress French Nails. As you can see, I'm wearing them right now. Um, I came so close, so close to not wearing press-on nails for almost a year, but I found that when the school year started, I was like ripping my nails apart because I was stressed. Whenever I'm stressed, I forget my whole like conscious, let's not bite our nails, let's maybe do something else. And I just pick them and I rip them and I don't realize I'm doing it until they're ripped apart. So they were down to the nubs and I figured I may as well just put some press on nails so that they look presentable first off. And then second, let them grow a little bit. And then hopefully if I see that they've grown out, I'll be less inclined to just rip them apart. Who the heck knows? On the flip side, I'm also happy to be using Impress Nails again because I have to say in the past six months, I don't know what's going on with them, but I always look at the Impress Nails whenever I go to any store that I know carries them. And they've been coming out with some really cute designs lately. And I try not to buy them because I'm like, I don't wanna wear Impress on Nails anymore. Like they're not the best for your nails. I wanna use my nail polish collection. But some of them have been so irresistible and their stock is so inconsistent. You may never see that pattern again, or you may see it a hundred more times. You just don't know. So I've collected a few here and there. Like I've got one with accent nails with leaves on it. So I'm definitely gonna pull those out and use them this fall. But I mean, I have mixed feelings about it for the most part. I wish I wasn't using impressed nails, but they look kind of pretty, so I don't mind them. I also have the Swispers ovals. These I have to report are not as terrible as the Swispers cotton, like just the cotton rounds. I still don't like these, those are not the best ever. They do leave a little bit of cotton on your face, but I do enjoy the ovals that are a bit bigger. I can get all of my face makeup and eye makeup off with one oval, which before when I was using just the, like the cotton circles, those would take me like a couple. So I like them a lot better. Also finished up a Curl Scrunch Controlling Gel from Garnier Fructis. This is really nice. Um, now that I've used this up and we're getting into fall, I'm gonna be doing less hair scrunching. So I'm trying out some sea salt sprays and I'm actually really impressed. I'm using a sea salt spray today and I never thought I could get my curls to not frizz out the way um, they hold with gel with sea salt, but kind of happy about it and also happy to be using or taking a dip into some of the sea salt sprays I've received before that never had a use. Also used up some simple micellar um, makeup remover wipes. These are the best, they're the best makeup remover wipes that I think Simple produces and I really like them. I also have Neutrino ones. I'm pretty equal, whichever one's on sale is the one that I would probably grab. All right, now moving on to wax. There's a lot of it. Um, I have the DW Wild Honey Nectar Candle. This it looks really bad, but it's not this candle's fault. I don't know what I was doing or what I was thinking, but I had this sitting on my stove and my stove and my oven are all in one. And like I had just pulled it out and I had just lit it and then I turned my oven on. And I like didn't think anything about it, didn't really think like, hey, maybe the candle will melt because it's sitting on the hot surface. Like that didn't register. And then all of a sudden I came back and the entire like brand new candle had become a wax pool. And it was like, I like didn't understand what was going on. So it had a, like a tough start to it, but the smell is awesome. They have this, I feel like in a ton of TJ Maxx and Marshalls right now, some on clearance, some not, but I'm thinking of getting another one of these because I really, really like the scent. It was just a good candle all around. It had a strong scent throw. I had it in my kitchen. I would also put this in my bedroom. Like it was a sweet, like just a sweet, nice, juicy candle that I was a big fan of. The other DW one that I used was the Coconut Lime Verbena. You can see it gave off like a ton of black soot. This was okay. I liked the smell better in the jar than I actually liked it when it was lit and burning. It is just not the strongest of scents and I kind of knew that going in, but I don't know, it just, I, I wouldn't get this one again. Also used the American Home by Yankee Candle Banana Walnut Bread. This did not do well. The um, Wicks, moved and it made it hard to burn, hence like the melting death sticker here. I just have decided I am not gonna buy candles from Walmart anymore, at least not any of like these ones or the Better Homes and Gardens or the Walmart version. They're just too hit or miss. I mean, for example, I also have the Better Homes Ice Lemon Pound Cake. This is like scary. I would like this and like you would just see black shooting out of it, like constantly. 
and it didn't have that great of a smell. Like it just, I just am not going to waste my money on them anymore. I don't think that they're trustworthy. And I just, even if I see good reviews on it, that person just locked out in my opinion. I'm not doing it. I also have the Yankee Candle White Gardenia. This is super disappointing as well. No scent throw, like none. And it smells beautiful in the jar. Like I love the way this smells. But the only way I was able to burn it to the, like down to the very bottom was because I was using wax malts coupled with it. I was using a lot of like vanilla floral notes to go with it. So I kind of convinced myself I was burning a candle when really I was just using this for the flame and I was using my wax melts for the scent. So wouldn't buy this again. Um, I've not been super impressed with the Yankee Candle lately. I don't know what's going on because I used to love their wax tarts, but as far as candles go, they're not, to me, they're not great candles. The last candle that I have is a Tilly Australia. This is a soy wax candle. I do not know the scent of it. Um, lots of sooting on this, but it, literally like there's no wax in here. Burned to the ground. Um, this was like a really decent soap scent. Would I buy this brand again? No, I don't think it's great. I picked it up at TJ Maxx. I had seen a review on someone talking about Tilly Candles and it just didn't like wow me. I'm not impressed the way I am with DW Home, so I probably would pass on it in the future. Uh, I used this Yankee Candle Winter Glow little tiny candle. Uh, again, no scent on it, disappointing. Um, I used the Yankee Candle Simply Home Autumn at the Shore. This produced some scent. To me, it's like the classic Yankee Candle scent. Um, so I wouldn't get it again, but I did like it while I had it. Now I have some wax cubes that I melted. I went through the Sedona um, Vanilla Cream. This is okay. I don't love the Sedona ones. These were given to me. The vanilla scent is just, it's all right. It's a little artificial for my liking. It's not like a rich vanilla scent the way Bath & Body Works produces it, which is the kind of vanilla I prefer. I also used the Better Homes Creamy Tahitian Coconut. Mm, again, a little artificial for me. Didn't love it. Didn't have a great scent throw. Wouldn't get it again. Then we have the Sensationals Petal, Flat, Petal Showers. Oh, this was great. I love the way this smells. It had a awesome scent throw. It lasted, two cubes lasted about like six to eight hours and I had to put two more cubes in. Blew through this because I love, love, love the way it smelled, but it's gone, no more. Also have the Sensationals Honey Bourbon Frosting. Very much enjoyed this. This has such a strong bourbon scent, which I like, and then it has that sweetness to it with the, the like the frosting. I was a big fan of this. I'm sad I don't have any more of really either one of these. These are ones that I just picked up randomly on the clearance uh, end cap at Walmart, and they don't have them anymore. I wish I had gotten some more. Then I have the Sensationals Violet Sugar. This is nice. This mm -hmm, is like a really like sweet vanilla violet scent, which mm -hmm, I'm a big fan of. So I have another one of these, I think, which I'm happy to have. All right, home stretch. We're getting there. We have just like skincare, body care, like shower items. First, I have the Amande uh, shower oil from L'Occitane. This was weird. I've never used a shower gel before. I um, have another shower, not a shower gel. I've never used a shower oil before. I have another one from um, Fortune Cookie Soap. It's a full size that I got in one of my um, like bigger boxes I signed up for. This stuff's weird. I don't think I like shower oils. I feel like in my mind, a shower oil should be able to replace having to put moisturizer on afterwards, you know, having to put lotion on. This didn't do that. It's a weird consistency or a weird texture that I don't love, so I wouldn't buy this. And the scent was a little too intensely almond for me. Used up this uh, hand cream. This is the Body Shop's Glazed Apple Hand Cream. I like this scent a lot. Hope it comes back this winter. Used up my Mostly Dead Whipped Cream from Fortune Cookie Soap. Yeah, that's like your classic sweet bakery fall scent. Used up this Ole Hendrickson Sheer Transformation Facial Cream. This is a little too thin for my preference. Um, I think if you have oily skin, this would be a better thing for you because it's not super thick, not super intense, but it absorbs quickly, which is nice. I just left my skin feeling a bit thirsty. I also have this sample from Fortune Cookie Soap. It was their um, face moisturizer. I did not like this. I ended up using it as a body lotion. It was just, something about it didn't feel like a moisturizer on my face. It just felt too thick like a body lotion. Um, so I didn't like it, wouldn't buy it. I have the Andalu Naturals Night Repair Cream Age Defying. 
this was fine. I used it for a pretty long time. I didn't see any age defying benefits. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily get that, but it didn't hurt my skin at all, which, you know, is never a bad thing. I used up another one of my fortune cookie soap, um, steam me up in shower, like steamers, really awesome scent. I do enjoy them. I used a real chemistry luminous three minute peel. I'm really liking this lately. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that I'm just not regularly exfoliating my face. I'm trying to get back into the routine of doing that, but it's just kind of fallen off the wagon. So in the meantime, this has been a really nice way to help balance the lack of removing the dead skin from my face. Uh, I use the Tarte, Tarte Guard SPF 30, just a sunscreen. It worked, would I buy it? No. And then lastly, I have my purifying black charcoal mask from So AE. Oh, this was nice. I would buy this again. I actually really enjoy a charcoal um, like paper mask. I just think it's really, really awesome. It helped kind of help clear up some acne that I was experiencing, reduce some of my oiliness that I was experiencing. Uh, and it just is a really nice overall sheet mask. So big fan of these. These were at Walmart. Definitely consider them if you struggle with acne or oiliness the way I do. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Those are all my empties. It's been like two and a half weeks. Clearly cannot wait two and a half weeks because this video is way too long, but I'm happy to be using products as I always am, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.